Dean Louis Cafe, thank you for that glowing introduction. Um, what can I say? Uh, <clears throat> oh, just get straight into it. Um, well, actually, thank you, Sarah Jane, um, uh, for contextualising um, our lives in relation to our history. <coughs> and where we can go from now. But kia ora. So Tūtama Wahine, or Taranaki, um, it's not a new name, and the work that we do is not new. It's grounded in the kaupapa of our tūpuna. The name was gifted to us uh, by Dr. Huirangi Kepuna, <coughs> and our Kuya Matarina Rokupa, who gave us directions um, in the mid-1987 uh, to address the issues in relation to family violence. And so from there, the organisation Tūtuma Wahine was formed. Um, so it's not a new kaupapa, it's not a, a new name, and it comes from the, um, the instructions by, from Te Whiti Oromamai to the woman maybe who were left behind when the men were um, illegally exported to the South Island. Uh, and so we have never considered, and I have never considered the work to be um, anything other than what we're meant to be doing. Uh, we're merely continuing on what our tupuna fire uh, did. Taranaki te maunga, ko tokomaru e me kahatuna e me wokoke o ke waka, uh, ko Ngāti Mutunga te iwi, ko kaitangata te hapu, ko raumati te whānau, uh, ko hau te tumawaki o tūtama wahine o Taranaki, me te kaimahi te ana, tawhito, no, te, yeah, no, te, te kaimahi tuakana o ngā rōpū, me mutu te mahi tu kino o rota te pānau. That's my mahi. So I'm also the CE, but I also have a uh, practice base as well, so I'm dealing with families, um, uh, men, women and children as well. And we're supported in this work uh, by um, our colleague, uh, Dr. Leonie Pihama, who has uh, given us the encouragement to uh, research what we do, to um, give us, and then develop our practice bases around what we are doing. This is Leonie. This photo was taken um, of Taranaki the morning after Sir Paul Reeves had passed away. So that's what Taranaki looked like. Um, most people thought it was lovely. It's snowing. Um, but the rest of us, you know, the mana, or Sir Paul, um, uh, that man, uh, this is the upper this image up here again, just to show you how lucky. Uh, and it's another image of, I like it. It's there because I really like it, but it's one of Nahina Wahaya's image. Nahina um, is uh, one of our, yeah, our great contemporary artists. So the reasons I've been showing you photos of Taranaki is because from where we sit in North Taranaki, Ngāti Mūtunga is in the north of Taranaki, and our view of Taranaki is um, just a little different from, as you go around the moment, you'll see that the view is always different, and there are different kōrero that go with, um, with our view. And this one, he maunga titoa here, e waipuna kurupupu, ahakoa, tukituki, e te poaka, e kore nei e mimiti, ka kurupupu, ka kurupupu. And it is an instruction uh, to us. It's a unique descriptor, um, but it's also a clear um, instruction to us to think about what is happening within our manga and how we can use it as an identifier. Um, the manga Tito, the Tito here refers to it as being barren or impoverished. And if you look at, our, at the manga before the tree line starts, that's exactly what it looks like. Uh, in the summer, when there's no snow on it, it it just looks like a giant kumara mound. Uh, but 
there's sort of terminology in relation to Kitokia, it's barren or impoverished. Um, to Fiti or Rum, I gave um, our iwi the name Kitokia uh, to our Farikai, and it's the names that we've had since um, the 1890s. So when we talk about the ever bubbling pool of, of knowledge, of, of um, yeah, never bubbling pool. The, um, but it's talking when they, our crew talk to us. An ever bubbling pool of what? And it was never of just of water, but always of, of knowledge, of porero, of um, wairua, of tupuna, te huwaura, te huna mate, coming together to, to help um, us today. The ahakoa to kituki te puaka is a reference, although it has been plundered by the pig, it is a direct reference to the crown. And um, what we say is the success of the legal settler government since since then. But it will never cease. Those pools always bubble. They will always be bubbling, they will always it will never stop. Uh, and so we why should we stop? It will bubble falls, it will bubble falls, and the knowledge will always be there. It's also from the north it's always been seen as um, uh, it's exactly as it's um, Sarah Jane has been talking about it's a scene, it has been um, areas of Akatoki in relation to resistance. And when um, we've had the discussions on Taranaki in relation to resistance and resilience, uh, because there's been a big push from government departments and throughout the policies to talk about resistance, you know, you, uh, one's ability to pin back from adversity. It's like, you know, he's another whack in the face and the little last will pull you back. It'll keep pulling you back uh, because you're resilient. Well, actually, you know, the last will eventually, you know, snap and, you know, your, your underwear are going to be down around your legs. And so what we look at in relation to resilience uh, and the resistance, because uh, that's the site of our families of that resilience. And Taranaki has been a site of resistance and the ability to resist what is happening, but there have been consequences. These, are, these images are there because um, I like them as well, but they are showing images of Te Ridinga or Kapuni. Um, they are he the, one of the healing poles on, on the mountain, again taken from um, it's a more safe place inside. These photos were taken by Leone's niece. Now, the Te Riringa Kapuni is the healing pool where our Ratana, he came to Taranaki for healing. He didn't go to the people with the other mama, he came to Taranaki, and that's where he used to go. We'll be thinking about social, social factors and cultural factors um, and interpersonal factors that affect uh, the work and what we're doing, you know, the mental health and the mental health factors. What, what we're wanting to look at, um, what we are looking at in, uh, in the immediate, immediately is in relation to social factors. How the violence, uh, alcohol, and drug abuse relationship loss, you know, cultural disorientation, cultural alienation, and uh, spiritual confusion and actually just spiritual poverty have affected uh, us and how we have been disconnected from our roots. And so we're just looking at three out of the four. Three out of four is not bad. So we're focusing. <coughs> The focus has been a community, cultural focus, and we're focusing on Māori community uh, and its primary prevention. We are, we are not, um, yes, yeah, I'll say it, but you know, it's raising awareness. So we're looking at raising awareness in relation to hapu and um, hui. We're doing hapu hui. We're doing community kōrero. Uh, and we're building, we're looking to build the capacity and the capability of whānau hapa and iwi um, to identify the leaders within those sections so that they can help, again, build that capacity. We're not, um, this is not, a, we're not looking at doing, a, a, it's not a random thing that we're doing. Uh, it's 
we've been methodical about it and we're incrementally addressing communities and sectors within Taranaki, Māori um, sectors within Taranaki and we've got another uh, people with us who are addressing stuff within the Pacific Island community within Taranaki. Um, so I'm saying it's not a, a um, sometimes things are being it just like well, let's go here and we'll talk about suicide and then, you know, over somewhere else. It's, and it comes up because something's happened in the newspaper. People are, people are saying, this is what we should be addressing. But the methodicalness of the information within Taranaki Iwi um, is not happening. So that's probably our main, our main focus. And it's the whole of Taranaki focus. It's not New Plymouth focus. It's the whole of Taranaki within our boundaries. Um, sorry, so that was that's, that's when we look at raising awareness, and this is where the um, actually the major part of uh, our work will be that interviewing knowledge holders and final experiences will inform um, the other parts, of course. But um, yeah. And why we're doing this? We're doing this because we're doing it conversation-wise, because conversation matter. And you'll see from here. This is taken from Peter Block, who's a um, community um, developer. Our aim is, and of course, is Indigenous community development. And it's to me, it's absolutely correct. It just <coughs> um, sits very well within community. If we want to change the nature of our communities, then we need to change uh, the nature of conversations we are having with one another. And this is our intent when I say we are methodically, incrementally going out within Taranaki to have conversations. And how we're doing it, this is some examples. Um, we're doing it through what I talked about, Hapu Hui and uh, community cordial. These are some of the ones that we're Taranaki have. Um, we we try we try to have one a month. This year we've we've held seven already, and um, the eighth one will be with Bonnie Duran next week. Uh, about forty to fifty people attend these um, community corridors, <coughs> and sometimes there's only a week's notice. We put Bonnie's um, flyer out. Uh, on Monday and on Tuesday morning, there were 25 um, registered already. So, of these, um, you can see there's about eight. Four of those community courted, or we were approached by community to um, to hold those sessions. You know, the Māori Ward 101. We're trying to get Māori representation onto the district, onto the council. The, the New Plymouth District Council approached us and asked us to hold that, that one on a, um, the what if around mental health, reshaping mental health. We were we were asked to hold that. Rethinking the system with the Huddy sisters, we were, we were asked to hold that conference in the, uh, the Free New Zealand around the um, are we using slave labour. There are all, we've been approached already for two more this season around the marking of the land march. And the community paediatrician is asked to have a court at all on uh, poverty uh, because one of our local MPs doesn't believe that children and some some children in Taranaki schools are hungry. Yeah. So we're looking to build uh, capacity and uh, capabilities within these conversations, um, and of course we're looking for that leadership. People are interested and having different sorts of conversations. If you think about the numbers that we've had and you multiply that by 50, there's a number of people that we're calling active citizens who are hearing about different subjects. So how we have done, what we, how we said about doing the Waipuna Korupupu was based on invitation. And invitation matters. So again, just looking at some of the work from Peter Block around transformation occurs through choice, not through mandate. And an invitation is the call to create an alternative future. 
And so when we're talking about an invitation over an email, I'm talking about a personal written invitation. Uh, because it, what happens um, when people are personally invited and they accept that invitation, they come into the room with a different... Something happens inside. They come into the room with a different perspective. They are there because they are interested. They're not there because they want to be fed or they feed information or they want something. They are there and they are more open. So it's a difference between coercing people in the room or tricking them into the room. Uh, they are there uh, through their own volition. Um, so we are looking to have again more informed, capable and confident um, whānau. They're all, uh, they're all um, building, well, it's all about building protective factors. Here are the first Waipuna Kurupupu Hui we held. These are some of the people that were invited and accepted invitations into the room. The name of the, the series of workshops that we were running is called Lifting the Lid on Suicide. Can't make any. <laughs> 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 lifting the lid, I just forgot that name. Lifting the lid on suicide. You know, cry thing, you know, coffin lids off because they've been pretty well nailed down. Um, yeah, in this, these are, um, so this again is another part of a group of the, that, that first lot that, came, that accepted the invitation. There were 35, and a third of the participants were male. They were all Māori, um, yeah, and, and uh, there was two Pacific Island people there, but all Māori. Because we didn't invite anybody else and we were clear about who we were inviting. Now, the, we had 35 participants, 36 participants, and a third of them were Māori men. Now, I attended an early meeting on Sunday, and there were 20 of us here, and there was one man. Any health hui or any hui to do with, you know, Amit and Taranaki, um, there can be 50 women there and two or three men. But in personal invitation, a third of that room were Māori men. So we're saying invitation makes a difference. Personal invitation makes a difference and personal invitation matters. <coughs> this is the inside uh, the inside of the, the pānui. They got the information about what was happening. There were two days. Um, on the, the second day, we lifted out 14 of Kai Māori, Kai Mahi, Pacific Island, Kai Mahi from Tūtino Wahine and put them into a training um, workshop on mental health first day. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm really sorry. Uh, Lisana Redby uh, was, uh, came down with um, Leone and Hedda and uh, she conducted a first aid uh, workshop because we're wanting to build the capability of, um, of Taranaki and that was the, the workforce that went to Lisana. And then what happened that second day when they were with Lisana, um, another 10 community members who couldn't get there for the first day came in and, uh, and took their place. So again, here's some more of that. Another image. Here's the other page in the Tanui. Um, this, this is about you, Lisana. Because her, her part of her portal. And Lisana may not talk if we have time at the end uh, because she did mental health first day training with uh, the group that are entirely indigenous, Māori and Pacific Island. And um, I think she said it was the first time we'd done that training with an entirely uh, indigenous group. And um, there are some differences between presenting uh, that information when, it's, when you're all the same culture. And this is the back of the Pānui. Uh, so it was, I brought one with me. And here you can see Hedda there, Clark. One of the things that Hedda uh, did was she deconstructed Te Whare Tūpuna to the group there. We were absolutely fascinated to see this whare. Uh, we had a, we've got a little um, marae uh, and you can take it apart. And she deconstructed it for them to how a marae works and what it does, and then put it back together so that it looked like a fuddy. And people talked about the different sorts of things and the different sorts of behaviour 
that happened in a whare tūpuna and in a house. So um, there was some insights and understanding that came from that. And the only, um, we'll talk shortly, uh, that talked about the whakapapa of hopelessness, um, which is of course connected to historical trauma. Here is some more. This is them getting ready for their second day. And this is the Pānui. We put it onto a canvas, the front of the Pānui. And for two days, each day, everybody that came and signed that canvas. And we gave it, the first one was given to uh, one of the young men that coaches uh, children in league. He's got over three, he's got over 300 um, young males. And he was um, just amazed to get that, that canvas. Um, and he, he's put it up in the club rooms because it's, so people can talk about it, and he can talk about it. And the other one we gave to um, one of the, the Māori teachers from Spotswood High School, who was given um, to, two days leave to attend, and he has put that up in the school as well, so that people can see and create conversations uh, about it. So there are some specific, Tabernake specific historical experiences, unique and it matters. And this is the only. Does it matter? This will be very short. Kia ora tāte. Tātei, tēnei kia koe, Sarah Jane, koutou uh, katoa, o te kātine, o te whaninei, O te whakatau mai i a mātou i tēnei pō. Tātou katoa, hui nō te whare tēnā tātou. Um, so, really, I think Sarah Jane in some way kind of gave the kind of context that we're working in uh, on this project uh, in terms of historical trauma. So one of the things, so my role really is whatever Nalopi tells me to do, um, and, and that's a long historical uh, activity within Tabunaki. Um, they call, they tell me what to do, and I go home and do it. So um, the historical trauma component is really about the contextualising of uh, the impact. Um, in this case, in terms of suicide, uh, but also in terms of the broader uh, family violence, sexual violence issues uh, that pervade uh, our whānau, kapu and community and iwi. Um, so I guess really the project is very grounded in an understanding of Taranaki, and it's really um, good to look through the the symposium booklet, uh, and to see the many helpful with iwi that are doing very specific mahi to our own. Because even though we have some very broad commonalities, we also have some really distinctive differences in terms of the impact of uh, colonisation in the historical context and uh, in the, each of our regions. And so, uh, as a research, so I'm really a research supporter of practitioners. Um, <clears throat> I know what I'm good at. Uh, which is the research frame and the academic frame, but I'm not a provider and I'm not a practitioner. So the work that I do is to support um, those working in the field, uh, at, the, at the cutting edge of the mahi with our whānau, um, to provide the kind of information and knowledge that they want to have uh, to reinform and to um, uh, influence and help reshape interventions or develop new interventions. So that's the kind of work that I and I do alongside groups, particularly like uh, Tutamoi. So, um, in terms of the, the Tabunaki context, um, similarly in, uh, to the Waikato Tainui context in terms of invasion, uh, the invasion of Tabunaki in the beginning of the, um, what really was the first of the, the uh, colonial wars against our people uh, in March 1860, so it's been 175 years uh, that we've experienced uh, that kind of invasion in Tanaki, and we continue to experience it in a whole range of contemporary ways. And so, working um, in interventions and developing interventions, and the notion of um, engaging different kinds of conversations with our people, because the conversations that have been imposed on us have not actually been conversations, they've been imposed consultations and processes that have not been particularly helpful or useful to our people in terms of trying to create ways of self-healing for ourselves. So within the, um, within the Tabunaki context, 
uh, and the, since really since March 1816, you know, our tupuna, as is the case here in Wakato have been, and other iwi, have uh, been seeking ways that we bring back uh, you know, processes of tilvana tiratana, processes of self-determining our lives, and in ways that are healthy and healing. So, like um, the family violence kaupapa, which I I now declare as a researcher, I would never work in uh, until um, Tutama Wahine demanded that I did. Um, I also had a view that I wouldn't work researching in the suicide area either until they demanded I did. But also in the context of having uh, a cousin who was suicided, living in Tamaki, and those people who live in Auckland near the hospital realise that you get a lot of calls around our father in the urban centres that actually suicide. And so one thing they really hit was when their cousin uh, suicided late one year and then a very close friend of his suicided three months later. And so we were at the Auckland Hospital dealing with those issues in a very short period of time with two very close people. Um, and so it became just a place that we needed to, that I felt as a researcher, I just needed to be with, the, with our father who were working uh, with uh, healing so we take a very historical trauma approach to the work, and that is really looking at the origins of traumatic events, the impact of those traumatic events, the way that they manifest um, now uh, in a contemporary context, the kind of disruptions that have happened, uh, and being able to name them more clearly and have conversations about those. So when we had the conversation, the first uh, we uh, at Tutama around suicide, we don't start with conversations around suicide, we start with conversations around really the invasion and all those issues around our people, what had happened to our people and the impact of that uh, in order to move toward the healing thing, the healing area. And I was actually, when I walked in the room and I saw so many uh, Māori men in that room, and because I've been in a lot of healing, a lot of healing hui, a lot of healing research we around well health and well-being, and I've never seen that percentage of Māori men in the room. So when we talked around uh, when Ngāpi was developing the notion of invitation, it for me just it fits with karma that we are calling our people in in a very specific way, in a very focused way. And so it works in a way that when we come in, we know what we're coming into. So given that Tutama Wahine operates, and that notion of Tutama Wahine Te Wāte Kuri is about a woman filling the spaces as our tūpuna tāni were removed from the spaces. So our woman did everything that was required for the well-being of our people. That has continued, but actually there's time now for their, our men to be more present. And a lot of those men that were in the room uh, were um, Māori men who had had friends who had suicided or close family and who were working in the ways that they knew how to work. They weren't counsellors, they were rugby league coaches uh, and they were sports coaches and they were working in different other mechanisms. They were at schools, uh, working with teams at schools, they were the physique teacher. So it was a whole new approach to how they were going to be working with young. Yeah. Uh, and so the kind of creativity that Tutama Wahine bring to the mahi is very specific Talanaki, and I guess that's probably the biggest thing kind of about um, the support from Te Nama Titini and Te Waka Haurua, uh, for this particular project, is that we're trying to work out how do we heal within Talanaki, and how do we work and draw on uh, the healings that others of other iwi and other nations can share with us uh, as well as being quite specific to the needs that we have within our own region. Mm -hmm. So that's really the historical um, component. And um, we've been fortunate within these series of, because it really is about active citizenship, it's a lot of the work that Te Tamawahini are doing, and that's about uh, promoting and encouraging an overall engagement, a more active engagement with our people in a whole range of areas, and in this context it's in the area of suicide and well-being uh, for our people. So to have those conversations was very exciting to do and it really could not have happened had we had not had the support for this kaupapa. Um, and where it goes, we're not sure, but as another uh, people has said, it's a very planned, carefully walked road. We are walking this road very carefully. Uh, 
because we have to walk it very carefully. And but we actually do walk in the notion of resistance. Tawanaki cannot work, walk in the notion with the notion of resilience. Resilience does not work for Tawanaki. Resilience merely enables us to survive, and we're not. We can't only continue in a space of trying to survive. We actually want to live. You know, we want to be actively living. We want our people to have the opportunity to be out there living, and resilience can't provide that in the Taranaki context. We have to maintain the notion of resistance, which is actually a very celebratory way of remembering the, the approach that our Tupuna have taken. So um, it is a very big year for many of our iwi in terms of the impacts of invasion uh, across the Motu. Um, and there are a whole bunch of things that, you know, when I, I see various commemorations, I see various kind of reenactments of, of, uh, of events that have happened. And I think that is a beginning. But I do wonder at times at to what point the healing process is then, is then included in these reenactments. Because I don't think that to reenact is enough. I think we have to do that and have a component of healing that is very conscious inside of that for all of us. And I know that's one thing that we're talking about at home. So um, in terms of that relationship, we are taking a very kind of careful, um, <coughs> long-term approach to the kaupapa uh, and really doing it in a way that we think will serve um, raising the awareness and the conversation. The thing around uh, Atamanaki for our people is that um, we have been silenced for so long that we don't quite know how to get out of it. You know, we don't know. We've been silenced about what happened in Pariaka. We've been silenced about a whole range of things to the extent that we now silence ourselves because we're too scared what, of what might happen if we actually articulate the pain. And so that level of silence that has happened, lifting the lid is a very gradual lifting. Um, and it has to be done very carefully, but it has to be done. Uh, and so um, I think that this kind of development, and I'm really looking forward, uh, I mean, I have to go to Tamaki tomorrow, but I'll try and pop back in tomorrow uh, at some point. And I think that we can learn a lot from how other iwi are raising the conversations and how other nations are raising the conversations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I get so freaked out when I have to do this sort of thing that I think, I don't know what I'm doing. I do know what I'm doing, trust me. I work in the community. <laughs> it's when I have to talk about it. Um, but I would just like to um, ask Lisa Anna if she would just give a few minutes talk to you all about the difference between. Yeah. Thank you, Nato B and Sarah Jane. Leonie, Nora, thank you for dragging me up here and including me as part of Tutama Wahini. Um, you have a big place in my heart as well as all of Paranaki and all of the great ancestors of the Maori Nation, especially with Paranaki and, and all of Otearoa. Um, I'm Inde. My name is Lisana Red Bear. I'm from Atlan in New Mexico. I'm here at the University of Waikato. I'm a Native American mental health specialist and a mental health professional in the United States. And I'm doing um, my PhD in Indigenous Healing Reclamation Art Methodologies Reclaiming Sacred in the 21st Century. I'm a, I do a training called Mental Health First Aid and I was offered an invitation to come to speak um, in regards to lifting the lid on suicide um, with Tutama Wahini. Uh, it was a great honor to accept this invitation as an indigenous woman um, from Great Turtle Island. We have an epidemic of suicide taking place um, among our indigenous nations, both urban Indian, Indian and um, reservation-based uh, Indian people. And so it's something that I think that even though we have great waters that divide us, it's something that's a commonality. And one of the things that I could um, point to is that intergenerational trauma. And specifically, I think there's a lot about 
surviving the intentional wars of extermination that our ancestors resisted. And um, so I was part of this conversation in lifting the lid uh, about suicide. And I was very thankful that uh, Nato be asked me to present mental health first aid because it's really important for me to give tangible intervention steps. Because I talked about the first day about what we call sacred pain. And when you have someone who's completed suicide, whether it's your father, whether it's your friend or your neighbor, or whether it's even within your tribe, you're all affected by that completion of suicide, that loss of life um, in your relation, in your tribe. And so we consider that a sacred pain. And so we have to be careful when we talk about that sacred pain. And one of the things that we don't want to do is just go into it willy-nilly, start talking about it without actually giving tangible resources to people on how to process that trauma. Um, because when talking about it, it can trigger people's emotions and it can trigger um, reoccurrence of depression. So one of the important things about mental health first aid, and it was really beautiful, um, because as Nadovi was saying, this was the first time that I had the honor of doing a, a complete, fully indigenous mental health first aid course. Um, the difference in that is that as indigenous people, we have a, a much deeper understanding of how we're all connected to everything, of all of creation, how the Creator works through all of us, how we're children of this grandmother earth. Um, there was less need for interpretation. And I can tell you what, as indigenous people, we are very, very brilliant people. You know, and we're not people that like to toot our horns all the time. We don't need to brag about our brilliance. That's the beauty of humility. Every single one of those folks that were in the class got 100% on their test. It was, a, and they had to have a test um, because it is a, a curriculum that's an internationally regulated curriculum. So in order to actually be certified, well, let me back up. What is mental health first aid? Everybody know what CPR is, and chest compressions, and mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? That's like regular first aid. And so when you get regular first aid, you have to go through the whole course, and you, you practice your chest compressions, you practice your mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and then after you pass the whole test at the end, you get your little card that says that you could help in an emergency. But in actuality, we're 10 times more likely to encounter somebody who's having a mental health or emotional crisis than we are to ever encounter somebody who's having a heart attack or we're ever going to have to do chest compressions or mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation or stop pulse bleeding on someone. So 10 times more likely to encounter someone with an emotional or mental health crisis. That's why mental health first aid is really important. And when you're bringing about this conversation of, of talking about something that oftentimes is wrapped in silence, is shrouded in silence, uh, not only because of maybe taboo, but also because of that sacred pain. Because sharing your sacred pain to somebody who can't listen non-judgmentally, to somebody who's always trying to fix you, or trying to take away that pain, that minimizes your experience, right? So we also have to train ourselves how to listen to each other, each other non-judgmentally, how to not minimize each other's experience, but how to comfort and how to support one another. And those are the interventions that I try to help, um, you know, disseminate through mental health first aid. But that was one of the biggest differences, that there wasn't the, necess the necessity to remove the spirit, remove our understanding of our ancestors from the training when working with indigenous people, because it's central to our healing. It's central to our ways of life. And that was a beautiful thing, not to mention that they were absolutely brilliant. So anyway, thank you so much. Yes, we're group. I don't get 100%. Thank you.
I'll put that this one of Tavanaki up as well because I like it. If you if you hear us talk about four times Tavanaki, then you say um, that's what it is. It's a snow cloud. It's what a snow cloud looks like. It's a double one too, it's got a room. Um, these were some of the some of this was some of the conversations that um, that were that were had and some of the questions that, that were being asked. Um, and I'm sure these sorts of questions are not new, but it was always new in that room. Um, yeah, people ask about cultural relationships. You know, do we have a cultural relationship with suicide? And if we do, what is it? Yeah, do we have one? Is there a tradition of suicide in Taranaki? You know, is there a whakapapa? And if there is, what is it? You know, and then is there a uh, genetic predisposition <coughs> to suicide? Does it run in families? Is it, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know most of those. Oh, that was interesting. And you can see here um, that, yeah, just that being able to talk safe. It's just that, um, for example, we in Leon we're talking, we are talking about building capacity, capability, confidence, and building a critical mass. And these questions here were more from um, around the, the health providers and community development. How can Tavamiki get effective resources? Or we talk about, well, actually, we're doing this work before. Um, everybody's been doing it, but it's been so random, and that stuff just does not work. So we're just going to get methodical about it. And so one of the things I was saying is, oh, God, we'd really like, I'd love to have, um, why don't we have a meter? Why, why haven't we got a meter? Why haven't we got Hanua? It's just the lens, it's just not Taranaki. It's, we, we want someone like that to do stuff for us. But we do other stuff. And um, this stuff here is commercial sen commercially sensitive at the moment. And you know, from those conversations, especially these ones, people were talking about, they were talking about um, things that have happened when their friend died or their brother suicided and they've never talked about it until now and all sorts of different things have started to come out. And when I looked at my notes, I was taking some notes, when I looked at my notes afterwards, I thought, oh, I've got these essence all over the place. And um, so I just played around with something for a while. Yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to reframe this. <laughs> because, okay, can you, they all start with the bloody alphabet. A for alcohol, you know, abuse. B for behaviour, bad behaviour, B for beer, C for colonisation. <laughs> I've gone through the whole dictionary, like a, you know, um, lemon alphabet, and got something, you know, obnoxious that's happened to us from every <laughs> <different>. <laughs> 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 But um, this is just something we're playing with at the moment, and um, we, we're going to do we're going to do more more with it. This is something we've been doing over the last last week here in play with. Um, I'm not quite sure. We've got something. Anyway, well, just let me show you. Just a, just a couple that we don't look around. That's new, you eh? You don't think like that. <laughs> and this here, again, these 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 two things are. Commercially sensitive as well, and we'll, we'll bring to the Manawa Whenua Conference what we've been doing with the stuff in relation to the tikanga and whanau order and how to line it up properly. This is one that we're looking at in relation to the suicide. I'm sorry, I'm looking up here, but I'm looking at here. Again, looking at getting sorted and self determining and successful. And, um, you know, what do we need to do? Now, at this moment, to get sorted. What do we need to get sorted right now? Yeah, what can you do? What can we do? Um, and being successful. How, can, how do we know it's done? Now, that's me. Uh, and so it requires, you know, it's something that um, a whānau member could use, could write on, or a kaimahi with a whānau member, or somebody that's not working so great. Uh, and on the back of it, uh, six values that we had worked with, that we worked with within the organisation, and what we've done is lined them up with Fano Order, the six goals in Fano Order, 
and then if you look further out, um, let me see there. Yeah, we've got Tikana. And that's been lined up. It's what? I can't see it. Whanau self management. And we said, well, whanau self managing, what? What would you say to your whanau? How would that be? And it's like, support whanau leaders to focus on skills, gifts, and assets members possess to keep each of um, to keep to keep each other safe and to help out maintain generous engagement with everyone share your gifts because um, you know the, the community works on gifts the abundance of gifts and the community is abundant in gifts we all got gifts but people tend to get towards the deficits first without thinking about the gift that that person brings into the room and share your gifts. We've all got gifts. And so each one has got, you know, um, be inspired. You know, with, with the Tereo Rangatira. On the other ones, we've got be proud, um, you know, enjoy life. Be proud to be Māori. Yeah. We can craft our own solutions, things like that. So those are just um, some things that we, we are working on uh, at the moment in relation to a useful practical tool that um, anybody can have anywhere and can use. Because um, I don't care what anyone says, our families do not read those booklets. I don't read them unless I have to, I'm looking for something. They don't. As much as they want to, as much as we want to, they don't. And so it's to get a more practical tool that can be held in the hand because the, the little thing will spin. It can spin. But the other side is that it's got a it's blank so that they can write in it themselves. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're looking at in relation to, you know, thinking about, we're, not, we're thinking about being successful. We're not thinking about killing ourselves. It's one of the things we've just got on there. It's like, just don't. Don't do it. Anyway, so those are... Um, they just those three sides are just a small cup of money. I have been doing some other stuff. Anyway, I'm looking forward to having that as a practical, um, something in your hand that people can use in a practical manner. And here is, um, I think this is probably the basis of, um, yeah, everything. I think anything is, is possible, and who, who, and who am I to hold you upon a friend? But it is absolutely true, and, it's, and clearly it works around linking things up um, with the history, with the politics and economics, and not just talking about everything else and leaving economics out. Uh, you know, it's sort of saying, right, Māori can talk about culture, but we're not going to talk about the economics of culture. Um, that they can be successful in joining our generations together, and that we can liberate ourselves. Because the, um, the underline of Tūtuma Wahine is Tangata Whenua Development and Liberation Service. And that's, um, that's what we're just going to methodically set about doing. Mm. Still doing it. Anyway. I tried to get my face superimposed on that, but I wouldn't, wouldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, 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 that's I mean, kia ora koutou. <laughs> 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 Um, you also got, got pictures of the Maya ones at the moment. <laughs>